Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a clip for you from Judge Anna Marie Anzalone at the 39th Circuit Court in Michigan. She is sentencing Jamie Carden, and I did the video of her taking of the plea, and that will be posted in the description. But Jamie Carden is the mother who sold her little ones for drugs and the use of a car. I don't want to give anything away, so I will we'll just let you watch. This is in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan versus Jamie Lee Carden. We have files number 22-20792FH, 22-21124FC. I have David Goldstein appearing on behalf of Ms. Carden. I have Douglas Hartung and Jacqueline Weiss appearing on behalf of the people. This is the date and time set for sentencing in this matter. Mr. Goldstein, I was handed um, a victim impact statement this morning from one of Ms. Carden's daughters. Just a reminder for purposes of this hearing, um, you need to make sure that you use initials and not minor children's names. All right? Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm supposed to record this according to my judicial attorney. All right. All right. So, Mr. Goldstein, um, did you receive a copy of the pre-sentence investigation report? Uh, the corrected one, yes, Your Honor. All right. Mm, was that the one email 1221? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And Ms. Weiss and Mr. Hartung, you also received it? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Very good. And Mr. Goldstein, have you had an opportunity to read and, or Ms. Carton, have you had an opportunity to read and review the pre-sentence report with Mr. Goldstein? Yes, sir. Are you satisfied with Mr. Goldstein and the advice that he has given you? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Goldstein, do you wish to explain or challenge the accuracy or relevancy of any information in the pre-sentence report? Some minor changes, Your Honor. I changed the sentence date on the cover page to 126.04. All right, that will be corrected. I corrected the jail credit on the uh, file 22.20792 should be 29 days. On the other file, on each count, it should be 543 days since we have an agreement that all the sentences will be concurrent. Okay, so that would be 22-21124FC. Correct, John, sorry. And then in the body of the report, uh, my client, it's not really an error, but back where it indicates that she received a nursing degree or certificate. Right, we, yes. We placed the uh, name of the, of the, the College is there. It's Northwest State Community College. She indicated it was in Archibald, Ohio. Apparently, there's one in Michigan also. All right. We'll make note of that. Ms. Weiss or Mr. Hartong, um, do you wish to explain or challenge the accuracy or relevancy of any information in the pre sentence report? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Okay. I'm sorry, Your Honor. On page nine, there's one thing on page nine. Um, when it talks about marriage narrative, it, it indicates that there are three, it says here that there are three children with Chris, that is not Chris's daughter. Okay. All right. So we've all strike that. Okay. I think that's it, Your Honor. Sorry. Okay. Um, does the pre-sentence report disclose any prior convictions in which there exists any known constitutional defect? No, you're wrong. The probation department has computed the minimum sentencing guidelines on file number 22-20792FH, count one, police officer fleeing fourth degree, to be two to 17 months. Do you agree with that computation of guidelines? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Weiss? Yes, Your Honor. On file number 22-21124FC, count one, assault with intent to commit great bodily harm less than murder, the probation department calculated the minimum sentencing guidelines to be 34 to 67 months. Do you agree with that computation of guidelines? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Weiss? Yes, Your Honor. 
Okay. And then on file number 22-21124 FC, count two child abuse for first degree, I'm sorry, the probation department calculated the minimum sentencing guidelines to be 135 to 225. Do you agree with that calculation of guidelines? One second, Your Honor. I circled PRB5 and I gotta and now I gotta remember why I did that. So just give me one second. Okay. That would be prior. I believe PRB5 is prior misdemeanors. Ms. McGrain, can I get my guidelines book? I think I took it back or something. Your Honor, I think the reason I circled it um, was that one of the prior misdemeanors was a possession of marijuana charge. And I know that in some courts, that's no longer considered a conviction. Other courts take the position that it was, a, it was a crime at the time. And so that doesn't change as far as prior record is concerned. But, I, but my understanding from a lot of literature since Michigan legalized marijuana, that they no longer consider possession of marijuana to be a criminal conviction. You're saying PRB4? I'm sorry, I've, I've got a circle PRB5. Oh. Ms. White. It is a prior conviction, and I believe it should be scored. Mr. Goldstein, um, at this time, it's still showing up as a conviction. It may very well get set aside, but at this time, I'm going to leave it on the screen. Well, Your Honor, my understanding is that the state took an action some time ago to, to eliminate all possession of marijuana convictions. I realize it's, I mean, you're, you'll find it if you look, it's certainly there, but my understanding is when they changed the law, that they went in and basically wiped out all possession of marijuana cases. They're working on that. No, Your Honor, it doesn't, it doesn't, change. doesn't change. All right, so any objection, Ms. Weiss? No. All right, so we will mark that as zero. I don't think this. It takes, it takes it to we'll change PRB five on child abuse first degree to zero. Wait. No, maybe, no. It, it does it change does. the guidelines. Okay. It's in a C grid rather, I mean, it's C rather than the D category. Do you guys want to take a break and go look at this? Yes, please. Okay. So, Ms. Carden, why don't you go have a seat over there? Mr. Goldstein and Ms. Weiss, why don't you step in back? Do you want my guideline book? Well, we got it. Well, that's actually easier. Can you get this to Mr. Goldstein? Actually, I don't think, Judge, I don't think we need that. The only, the only question is, is, what, is whether or not that possession counts. If it does count, the guidelines are, the, are what they are now. If it doesn't count, it changes the guidelines. Very minimally. Yes, I just looked 10. at, yeah. yes, we just There's looked something. at the new range, 126 so, 10, so we're going to consent to get rid of that five points. So the guidelines will so now be, all right, sorry, you go yes. back up. So 126 to what? 210. All right, Ms. Walsh, I'll make that addition. Yeah. Change. All right, sorry about that. All right, very good. So we'll make that change. Um, Anything else for the guidelines? No, you're fine. All right. The record should reflect that I was provided a victim impact statement this morning and that I am able, I was able to hear the young woman enough to uh, state that everything she said was in that victim impact statement. Is that correct, Mr. Goldstein and Ms. Weiss? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Anybody else? No other victims. All right. So you were very brave, and I'm very proud of you for being able to get up there and do that. All right. Mr. Goldstein, um, Ms. Weiss, do you want to reserve a statement after, or would you like to make your statement now? Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to reserve my statement. All right. Mr. Goldstein, is there anything you'd like to say on behalf of your client? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, this is a fairly unusual situation in that cannot deny that certain things happened. There's no question that they did. But this is not the person, being Ms. Cardin is not the person who did those things. That's not what she's accused of. She's not accused of doing things. She's accused of not doing things, which is not protecting her children. The context of this, Your Honor, is that my client is not an evil or a bad person. My client was 
gripped by an incredibly intense addiction to drugs. The pre-sentence report indicates not only the amount of drugs that she was doing, but the type. She was doing she's doing more she was doing she was doing alcohol on a daily basis. Some of them starting from when she was 13 years of age. And the problem, Your Honor, is that not, never having been a drug addict, I think it's hard for me to understand, and I think anyone who's never been a drug addict to understand the power and the control that hard drugs have over someone's life. As the court is well aware, having read the reports and having heard the plea, my client was allowing other individuals to do things in order for her to feed her habit. Now, I'm not excusing what she did. I'm not trying to justify what she did. I'm trying to understand what she did, why a mother would allow this to happen to her children. And again, I don't think I can answer that question, at least not for myself, because I've never been a drug addict. I don't know what that's like. I've never been addicted to alcohol. I've never been addicted to etc. So I don't know what that feels like, but it must be awfully strong and awfully powerful to, to have created the situation that was created in this particular case. So I'm not asking the, the judge, the court, or anyone else to, to pat Ms. Carden on the back and say, you were a good mother. No, what I'm saying, try to understand what she was going through and understand that if it had not been for the drugs, this probably would not have happened. And so what the court should be looking for, yes, there has to be some punishment. My client understands that. But there also has to be some, some understanding that this is not an evil person that needs to be locked away for the rest of her life. What she needs is rehab, treatment, and help in breaking that addiction. Now, certainly, having spent the last 540 some odd days in, in jail, she is probably drug-free right now. But we need to understand that there's an attraction out there that's going to grip her again once she gets out of the prison, if we don't address that issue. So I'm asking the court to give her the lowest sentence the court feels is appropriate. Ms. Carden, is there anything you'd like to say on your own behalf? First and foremost, I would like to thank Okay, so hold on a second. Mr. Goldstein, could you have perhaps move the microphone down a little bit? Ms. Carden, take a deep breath and then make sure you speak loudly enough that we pick it up on the microphone, okay? <laughs> First and foremost, I would like to take the time to apologize to my children, family, of course, for all the pain and suffering I have caused and the time I have taken away from people, not only during my incarceration, but also prior to that because of my addiction. I would like to throw myself at the mercy of the courts during my sentencing. Your Honor, as you see, I have a severe addiction problem. After 16 months of incarceration, I can finally admit I want to need help. I feel president of the help people with addiction and mental health problems. I'm begging for a second chance at life. I'd like to do a long-term inpatient dual diagnosis treatment center. I realize my mental health is my number one trigger. I know it's a lot of work in recovery, but with the right support, I know I can and will do it. I'm 37 with a college degree and have never been in trouble before this. I can promise I will never get in trouble again as I have learned my lesson. I've already lost everything due to my addiction and choices I've made, including my children, my family, my career. Twice. Your Honor, I know usually only one prosecutor speaks, but I'd ask the court to allow me to say my piece as well as Mr. Hartog. I would like to indicate for the court that we heard this morning that Ms. Carden was convicted based on her failures to act instead of an act itself. Jamie Carden was notified multiple times that Sam Compton and Ernie Black were offenders. Not that she failed to protect them. She put them in situations to be around those predators. 
She indicated she did that because she was getting money, vehicles, whatever she needed to feed her habit. That's not a failure to act. That's a willful act to put your child in those situations. <clears throat> First time that I met the young lady that stood before this court to speak to you, she couldn't have even reached my shoulder. Over the years, I've watched her grow into a beautiful, strong young woman. And I've heard about the awful things that she's been through. So to suggest that, that this is just something short of evil, I don't agree with. And I'm asking the court to sentence the 12 and a half to 40 years. Mr. Hartman. So because we did a lot of this work in advance in terms of what we're doing today, in terms of the actual numbers of sentencing, the court's choice today is somewhat limited on, the, on these matters. And the court was really deciding, I believe, um, decided on the bottom end of the sentence for the child abuse charge in 10 years and 12 and a half years. Um, and the very thorough, very concise report compiled by Jennifer Walsh lays out very, you know, truly significant reasons why to follow her recommendation, which includes the 40 year cap, 40 year maximum cap on the top, and the 12 and a half year recommendation on her part as well. And for the reasons that, that I'm, what I'm saying, what the court has heard today, what Ms. Weiss has said, and what the victim has said, those are all very well supported. What I wanna say directly is that uh, the breadth and scope of the tragedy that was put in motion by Jamie Carden's drug addiction borders on mythological Greek tragedies. Let's take a look at what happened here because she has a chief. She basically sold her daughter for drugs. Her daughter was assaulted because the defendant has, has a drug addiction. Because the defendant has a drug addiction, the victim's father in cold blood murdered two men and almost a third, and almost murdered the defendant. He testified as such at the preliminary examination that occurred in this case. I'm sorry, you can't talk right now, please. What Ms. Carden said was he tried to kill himself too. He was doing a murder-suicide is what he was doing. And that's all very accurate. The man that he didn't kill, Hold on, hold on. The man that he didn't murder went to trial, Ernie Black, and the victim testified in that case, and the victim testified in the preliminary examination for that case. And she was strong, and she told the jury what happened. And Mr. Black was convicted of criminal sexual conduct in the first degree, and because he had a prior criminal sexual conduct in the first degree or third degree. He is now in prison for the rest of his life without a chance for parole. This is the kind of victim that we have in this case. She is strong and she is courageous. And when it was time for Mr. Black, he sentenced, he had a letter written out just like she had today. And again, she uh, had some difficulty at first. And I remember in the hallway, she didn't want to do anything. So I said, Are you ready to go in and bury this son of a bitch? He went in, spoke with courage, just like she did today, and with a higher volume than she did today. This has gone on for a long while. Ms. Weiss is correct. It was first started out with Ms. Borders, 
myself and Ms. Weiss, we have literally watched her grow up into a very brave young woman, all because of what happened. And I'm sure that's bittersweet from their perspective, probably sad from their perspective, because if she did not know Ms. Borders and Ms. Weiss and myself, she would not be here today, having had what happened. But she has emerged out of this much more than a survivor. She's a hero. Okay. And I may make a few questions <coughs> after hearing what sure. As the court knows, I've known Mr. Hartung for many, many years. And I've always respected Mr. Hartung for, among a number of reasons, his professionalism. And that showed here today. Because when he addressed the court, he didn't say that all these terrible things happened because of my client. He said all of these terrible things happened because of her condition, which is exactly the same thing that I said in this court when I addressed the court a few moments ago. Jamie Carden is not a bad person. Jamie Carden doesn't go out looking to do bad things, but Jamie Carden had a terrible drug addiction. And that's where the, if you want to talk about blame, at least 80% or more of the blame rests with that addiction and not with Jamie Carden. Now, he also went on to one thing that I do disagree with that he said to the court. He talked about Chris Carden, and, and, he, and he somehow seemed to feel that Chris Carden only did what he did because of my client, and that's not true. When you want to talk about someone who made a conscious choice to do something, Chris Carden picked up a gun and killed people and tried to kill this person standing next to me, and she's not responsible for what Chris Carden did, nor is her drug addiction responsible for what Chris Carden did. One person in this world is responsible for what he did, and that's him. And the court can address him when the time, I assume, I don't know if you have it or Judge Allsaver does, but that will be addressed at the appropriate time. But this is the person, Jamie is the one being sentenced today, not Chris. In determining the appropriate sentence in this case, the court has considered the seriousness of the offense, your history, the principal proportionality, the statutory penalty, the cost of confinement, the sentencing guidelines, the report and recommendation of the probation department, as well as what has been said upon the record at this hearing. The criteria and reasons for the sentences are the nature and gravity of the offenses, the discipline appropriate to their commission, deterrence against repetition by you and by others, the potential for reformation, vindication for law, and the protection of society. It is the sentence of the court that on file number 22-20792FH, you will be sentenced to the Michigan Department of Corrections for a period of one year, four months to two years with credit for 29 days. And that is on the fleeing fourth degree charge. Um, Let's see, you will pay a crime victim assessment fee in the amount of 130, DNA testing fee in the amount of $60, and a $68 state cost. On file number 22-21124FC, on count one, assault with intent to do great bodily harm less than murder or by strangulation, it is the sentence of the court that you will serve five years to 10 years with credit for 540 days, 43 days with the Michigan Department of Corrections. There is a crime victim assessment fee in the amount of $130 and $68 in state costs. On file number 22-21124 FC, count two child abuse first degree. It is the sense of the court that you will serve a period of 12 and a half years to 40 years with the Michigan Department of Corrections with credit for 543 days already served. There is a crime victim assessment fee in the amount of $130. Ms. Walsh, do I assess the $60 DNA fee on each file or just one? I think it's just one, isn't it? Just one, okay. Um, 
during the term of your incarceration and parole, you will obey and comply with all the provisions required and engage in substance abuse counseling, as well as mental health counseling. Is there anything else, Mr. Hartley, Ms. Weiss, or Ms. Walsh? No, thank you. All right, so Ms. Carden, my bailiff is going to bring down to you three, two sets of your notice of right to appellate review. There's one set for each file. I need you to initial and date the top copy for our records to acknowledge that you received the paperwork. The other copies are for you. If you wish to appeal your sentence, you would fill out the information on the form and mail them to the address listed on the form within 42 days. Um, Ms. Walsh, um, the victim impact statement that was read on the record today, I want to attach to the PSI. Okay. And to the young lady who spoke today, you can't pick your parents when you're a child. You can't choose who your parents are. You can't choose a lot, most of the things that happen to you, but you can choose the future you will have. And you're sitting there with some wonderful people who will help you do that. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Record will reflect I received back a signed copy of the notice of rights of color review. Well, it sounds like she got the max that the judge could possibly give her, and I'm glad for that. What I didn't like was when the attorney got up and said that she wasn't responsible for what these other people did, and I completely disagree with that. But not for her. Those men wouldn't have had access to her kids. And if not for her, the father wouldn't have felt like he needed to take matters into his own hands. So I, she leaves carnage in her wake. And I think she is responsible. That's just my opinion. But let me know what you guys think. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you next time.